Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending. My name is Ryan Manuk. I'm a solutions consultant at FileMaker, and we have a fantastic webinar for you today. I'm joined by fellow solutions consultant Ronnie Rios, who will make the case for why FileMaker's server should be hosting your solutions. But before we get started, let's spend the next minute or two covering a few brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, throughout today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in and ask questions, so let's talk briefly about how to do that. Go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click send. And we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. And with that, allow me to introduce Ronnie Rios. Thank you, Ryan, and welcome everybody to our webinar. I'm really, really excited to be here. So let's get started right away. And before we get started, I want to uh, I want to uh, introduce everything with a little story. And um, it's a story that we hear very often here at FileMaker from a lot of our customers, not unlike yourselves. And um, let's pretend for a few minutes that I am the uh, owner and manager of a small but growing uh, company in the landscaping industry. And I heard on a, I was participated in a webinar not too long ago about FileMaker, and I identified FileMaker as a probably good solution for me to task to tackle some of the tasks that I have in my business. So I went in and with FileMaker Pro and developed this little solution for. Them. Now the solution is uh, pretty small, it's not too complex, but it, it really addresses a lot of our needs. And now it's helping me manage all of our customer information. It, I can see all the work that we've done for particular customers. It's helping me manage some of the documentation, the contracts that we have with our customers. Now so far the solution really uh, resides here on my desktop. Right? I've developed it here on my own computer and resides here. And uh, so far I'm the only one who has access, of it, access to it. Um, all of my employees are really giving me the information and I'm going ahead and putting it here in, in the solution. Now as time goes by, th the database starts to grow and the data starts to, uh, to become a lot more important. And also the, uh, I'm tweaking a little bit the solution, so it's becoming a little bit more robust. But I've noticed that if to really kind of get, take advantage um, of our solution, I really need to be able to collaborate with all my employees. Everybody needs to be needs to be able to have access to this to the information that I have here on my desktop solution, um, and collaborate in real time so we can um, so we can gather insight and take decisive action towards our goal. So, um, in learning a little bit about FileMaker, I discovered that there is a sharing functionality built into FileMaker Pro. It's called peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So this enables me to share the content of my solution with everybody that's on my network. And it's very easy to activate. It's very easy to use. If I go here into the share menu here on the, on the taskbar, open over here, I have an option here that says share with FileMaker, with FileMaker clients. Turn it on, click on OK, and by doing so, everybody that's on my network has the ability now to log in uh, using FileMaker Pro on their computers or FileMaker Go on their iPads or, or iPhones. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like. This is my iPad, and I've already downloaded FileMaker Go from the iTunes App Store. FileMaker Go is our um, iOS client and allows us to run FileMaker solutions from our uh, iOS devices. So I'm going to go ahead and tap in here into FileMaker Go and host. I can see my computers over here and I can see my customer file. It's amazing, right? It's really great. So now I have the same solution that I have on my desktop. I have all the information available to me on my iPad no matter where I go here in the office. So now I can go into meetings and, and access the information that I have on my desktop from my iPad. This also means that anybody, all, uh, any, any one of my employees from their computers can also access the information from their, from their Mac or Windows computer using FileMaker Pro. And the information is, is updated in real time. So that means that if I went here on my iPad and changed the information over here, say change the last name here, Doris, change it to Smith, as I change there, it automatically changes here on my desktop. So we're guaranteed to always be looking at the same information at the same time uh, across uh, across our network, and this is really this is really great. And it's going to improve our productivity. However, peer to peer has a couple of limitations. The first thing is I can share um, I can share my solution with up to five connected users at any given time. So that means if my uh, team grows to beyond uh, beyond five more employees, we'll kind of hit a, a roadblock there. The other thing is that 
the file here lives on my desktop. So it really kind of uh, it is dependent on my computer. So in order for others to be able to access this file, my computer has to be turned on, not sleeping or hibernating. It has to be completely on. FileMaker Pro has to be running, and the solution file has to be open as well. If I decided one day that I wanted to go home early and close, try to attempt to close the file, I would get notified that there are people connected to, uh, to my solution. But that means that if I leave early, I'm getting everybody to, to close, the, uh, uh, close shop early as well. It's probably not what I want to do. So this and there are other limitations about FileMaker, uh, FileMaker's peer-to-peer -peer sharing when it comes to deploying your solution. It's kind of the things that we want to address today. So you know, this is a FileMaker server webinar, so you can probably imagine that a lot of these limitations can be solved with FileMaker server. But let's have a little closer look at some of these. So let's kind of illustrate what we've, what we've done so far. So I've built and started running my solution on my desktop computer. Right? I used FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. I then um, turned on the sharing functionality and was able to access the solution using FileMaker Pro um, on either Windows or a Mac. And I can also use FileMaker Go from an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPad. So um, again, I can access FileMaker Pro or Go, and up to, up to five users can connect to it. What exactly is FileMaker Server that I think it can solve, my, solve our problems? Well, FileMaker Server is software for managing and sharing database solutions that can then be accessed from FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go, and FileMaker Web Direct clients. So it's really a software that I need to install on a computer, and the computer I normally install it to will, uh, will normally be referred to as a server. And that's just another name for a computer that's being dedicated to provide services um, throughout the network. Normally, this computer is going to be stored at a secure location, either in the office or off-site, probably in a room dedicated for this, this type of uh, 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 information technology equipment. Um, but it's just a computer. You know, otherwise, it's just a computer. Now, FileMaker Server isn't just one piece of software. It actually is a multiple. It's, there's multiple components in it that work together in, in order to provide the services that we that um, that we're seeing. So. There are several components. The one that most people are familiar with in FileMaker Server is the admin console or the administrative console. And this is a web application. You can access it from a, from a web browser that allows us to configure um, and set up FileMaker Server. It's the one that we're mostly going to be interacting with in order to, um, to set up FileMaker Server. The other component is the, another component is the database server. And this is the component that's really responsible for hosting our database files. Um, it's the ones going to make our, our solution files available to FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go, and FileMaker Web Direct clients. There's also a web publishing engine component in FileMaker Server. And when we, when we uh, deploy our solutions to the web, the web publishing engine is in charge of taking the information on, of our solution files and converting it into a format that web browsers can interpret. We then need a, uh, we need a web server that's going to kind of de deliver the information that last mile to the web browser. So it communicates with the web publishing engine through a piece of software that we call the web server module. So the web server module um, works as a conduit between the web publishing engine and the web server. If we use the custom web publishing engine with PHP, the PHP engine is also required to interpret the PHP code that uh, uh, in which we built our, our, um, our application uh, in order to run on the server and deploy our solution. So how does, where does FileMaker server sit in the entire, um, kind of the overall scheme of the FileMaker universe platform? Well, let's have a quick look at all the components or, or all, the, the, uh, all the products that, that form the FileMaker platform. So first off, we have FileMaker Go here on the left. In FileMaker Go, we kind of mentioned that we saw it out here on my iPad. It's the iOS application that we use to access FileMaker solutions from an iOS device, which could be an iPhone, an iPad, or, or even an iPod Touch. It's freely available from the iTunes App Store, so you can go ahead and download, download it uh, whenever, you, whenever you have a chance. Then we have FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro Advanced. Now, this is a desktop application that we are uh, be using to create our solution, but also to access solutions uh, directly from our computers. Um, it, it is the software that we mostly use for uh, all the configuration and and, um, um, and building and designing our solutions. On the right, we have FileMaker Web Direct, uh, which is a brand new client in, in the FileMaker platform. And it's a, it, 
takes our existing FileMaker layouts and reproduces them into HTML5 so it can be accessed and consumed, consumed from a web browser. All you need is really a modern web browser, supported modern web browser, to access a FileMaker solution and have a completely interactive experience um, directly from the web browser, which is pretty amazing. Then the bottom, kind of in the center of it all, you have FileMaker Server. It truly is kind of the supporting uh, piece of the entire platform. Uh, we kind of think about it as the, kind of the heart and soul of the platform. It's the one that enables all this uh, amazing features to run and, uh, and to be able to deploy it to all of these clients, be able to host all the information and be able to manage it very easily. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, why do I need FileMaker Server? Well, if you ever uh, asked yourself or ever wanted to do any of the things that's listed here, then you absolutely need FileMaker Server uh, in your deployment. So if you ever want to know who's accessing your, your data, how and when they do it, if you ever want to kind of administrate all the solution files, uh, we started with one in our example, but maybe you have multiple solutions, you probably will be able to uh, access and, and uh, deploy brand new solutions very easily. If you ever want to secure the information a lot more than you could with just peer-to-peer, -peer, um, even, even uh, secure the information as it's being transmitted from server to client. If you ever want to store the information in a centralized computer in a secure location, what about backups? If you're really kind of ask yourself how important is your data? You know, is it correctly backed up? Peer to peer, there's a lot of limitations on how I can do that. And if you ever want to deploy interactive web solutions without learning how to code and uh, kind of learn web development, then Thomic Server is a must in your deployment. So let's look at some of these things uh, in a little bit more detail. So let's start with administration. So in our example, we started with a simple kind of a one, a one solution here to administrate our, our uh, customers and the work that we've done with them. But down the road, I'm probably going to want an invoicing solution. I'm probably going to have uh, something to manage inventory and, and things like that, so maybe some asset tracking, documents tracking, and things like that. So it's going to be, become harder and harder for me to administrate all of these databases because if I do peer-to-peer, -peer, I remember I have to have them all open at the same time on my computer. That means multiple windows there. It'd be kind of pretty hard. With FileMaker Server, administration becomes very easy. Uh, using the administrative console that I've mentioned earlier, uh, we can see and we can administrate very easily all the databases and files that are, that, are, that are open. I can close the ones that I don't need. I can remove them. I can upload brand new ones and kind of get a pretty good idea of all the solutions that are running. I can also see the health of my server. I can see um, how well it's running and who's been logging in at what time and how they're logging in as well. And actually, I'd like to show, it, show you how easy it is to do all this. I'm going to go ahead and break away from here real quick. And um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser here. And this is, this is the administrative console. So it's all, like I said, it's all in a web, uh, it's all in a web browser. Um, when I log in and I go, it goes directly here to the status page, I can quickly see the status of my uh, of FileMaker server. I can see all the components are running and quick information about what's going on. By clicking here in the activity, I can see all the databases that I have running at any given time. By clicking on any one of them, I can do several operations on it. I can open, I can close them and open it up again, perform a verification. I can pause it from, from running. I can even send a message to all the users that are connected, that are connected to that particular database file. Uh, I can let them know that it would do maintenance and that they need to log off for a minute or two. I can also, if we're not using that file, we can go ahead and remove it directly here from the administrative console. Here in statistics, I can see and monitor the health of, the, uh, of my FileMaker server. I can get quick statistics here of what's going on, but more, I think, more importantly, I can see graphical representation of some of these points. Then I can see this. See, hmm, looks like there was a lot of activity this morning. I can kind of zoom into that and see what was going on. Look at different data points. And kind of overall see what was, what's was been going on with my server. Here in the long view, I can, be, I can look at, um, more specifically, all the events that have happened to the server. I can see absolutely every single thing that's happened so far since the server has been started. Every single event since, uh, uh, including opening databases, when, uh, any restarts or anything like that. But I can even narrow it down. Let's say I want to see um, how many times our invoices database has been opened and by who. I can go ahead and uh, filter this a little bit. I'll type in here invoices and filter here all the log entries. So I can see now every single time that our invoices solution 
uh, was open and closed by all the users. You can see all the, uh, every single time that it was open or closed. It's pretty handy sometimes. Very good. Let's go back here and talk a little bit more about uh, some of the other benefits, like scaling. So I, I mentioned earlier that uh, with my solution that I'm running here from my desktop, I have the uh, I have the ability to run my solution and share it with up to five connected users, and that's the limitation there as far as growing with peer to peer. So if my business were to grow, and I really hope it does, um, I'm hoping to have more than five employees working for me. So um, by relying on peer to peer, it won't be able to grow with me. If I make a server, however, I can host up to 125 files simultaneously, and hundreds of users can be connected at any given time. And they can all connect directly from their desktop, from their mobile devices, or even from their browser. So I need to ask myself, you know, uh, how will my business be impacted if my solution can't grow with me? So if I make a server, I'm pretty, sh uh, pretty sure that um, our solutions will be able to run and be able to uh, take care of the capacity uh, of our business as it keeps growing. Another important uh, uh, benefit of FileMaker, uh, including FileMaker Server in the environment, is security. Now, security is, is on top of everybody's mind nowadays. Now, not that there isn't any security with peer-to-peer, -peer, but FileMaker Server introduces some enhancements in the security model in the FileMaker platform. First off, we can include external server authentication. What this means is that if my organization is already using a directory uh, service to provide credentials for other systems in the um, uh, in my, um, in my company, and I can leverage those and have people log into my FileMaker solutions using the same credentials that they're using elsewhere in other solutions throughout the company. I can use Active Directory if we're running on a, on a Windows machine, or I can use Open Directory for you if we're running on a Mac environment. The other important uh, aspect of security enhancement uh, when using FileMaker Server has to do with the encryption over the wire, encoding all the information that's being transmitted from FileMaker Server to the FileMaker clients. And we use an industry standard SSL encryption. It's the same security that you that your bank uses when you log into the to their website. You probably notice when you go to your bank's website, there's a little padlock there in the address bar. The little padlock indicates that every single piece of information that's being transmitted from your bank's server to your web browser is is encoded for a security measure. And we can do the same thing here on FileMaker Server. And there's and there's even a, a visual security indicator, the little padlock that we see on our web browser. Actually, I it's so easy to turn on, I actually wanted to show it to you. I'm going to go ahead and break away again here. And um, this time I'm going to go here where it says database server. And uh, under the security uh, tab here in the database server, notice that down here I've got an option called secure connections. If I turn on require secure connections, save the changes, I'll go ahead and back here into FileMaker Pro and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up a a solution file that I have on my server. And notice that down here, there's a little padlock here on the lower left. The same padlock you would see on your web browser when you log into um, to your bank's website or uh, any other secured website. And it's indicating that we're using an encryption, using SSL encryption, to encrypt all the information that's being transmitted from the server here to my client. So just by turning on that little checkbox, I've enhanced the security here in my overall uh, solution and throughout my company. I'm protecting the data from being uh, from eavesdropping from anybody uh, on the network. It's pretty amazing if you think about it. Just by clicking a little checkbox, we've enhanced greatly the security of the entire solution. Another important aspect uh, of FileMaker Server that brings to the, as far as benefit goes uh, in, is inserting FileMaker Server in your environment has to do with backups. Now going back to um, our original story, uh, hosting my information from using peer-to-peer -peer on my computer, if I ever need to do a backup, I have to close the database file in order to make a copy of it. And we know that ha ha what happens if I, if I have to close the file. It means everybody else on my network, all of my employees, have to stop working. They have to close the file first. So I would have to close the file, make a copy as a backup, and then reopen the, the solution file so we can continue working. Now that's a serious uh, interruption in the workflow of my company, and I really don't like that. The other thing is that I have to remember to do that. It's a manual process. So if I wanted to back up every single day, I have to remember to do that uh, whenever I come into the office or before I leave. If I don't come into the office one day, then that means the backup does not get done. And that's pretty serious. I'm not protecting my data the way it should. 
also, if anything would happen to my computer, the data would probably be lost. So I have to be very careful about that. Public Server really kind of solves this problem by automating and scheduled backups. Um, it allows us to uh, keep multiple copies per schedule, and it also keeps multiple copies per time frame. So we can have uh, several copies, maybe we can have a schedule for daily, for weekly, or even monthly backups. And for each one of those, we can have multiple copies. And it's very, very easy to do. Um, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it once again here at the admin console. This time here, I'm going to go to the schedule section. And when you install FileMaker Server, it automatically creates three schedules for you, three backup schedules for you. It creates uh, a daily, an hourly, and a weekly. And uh, it enables the daily one. So even if I forget to do this after I install FileMaker Server, FileMaker Server is actually already doing a daily backup for me. So even if I forget, I'm already getting backups, which is pretty awesome. Right, so let's say I want to create a, a new scheduled uh, backup, and I want to back up uh, roughly monthly. I want to keep a monthly backup. And go over here to this menu and create a brand new schedule. And the schedule could do one of many tasks, but uh, for now, we're going, to go, we're going to kind of focus here on the backup. Over here, I can choose which database files I want to, to back up. I can choose, pick and choose which, which database files, but for now, I'm going to let, uh, let FileMaker Server uh, back up all the database files. Over here, I can choose where I want the destination of the backups to be and how many copies I want to keep uh, um, for this particular scheduled backup. Because I'm doing it monthly, I think I'll, I'll keep 12, 12 copies. This will give me roughly about a year's worth of backup for this particular schedule. Down here, I can even include a verification process. I can have to make a server verify the, the backup file before, before it completes or even save a clone a copy of the file. A clone copy is just a, a, a copy of the file with no data in it. For now, I'm just going to leave those off. So over here, I need to choose what kind of what frequency I want here for this backup. Um, I could do daily, weekly, or every number of days. I'm going to choose here a number of days. I'm going to start doing that today, and I want to choose a time. Uh, I want to choose a time that actually uh, nobody here is in the office. So I know that unless we're burning the midnight oil, nobody's here at 11 p.m. So I'll leave it at that. And here, I need to know how many, um, after every uh, number of days, um, number of days, we're going to do this backup. So I kind of want to do it roughly every month, so I'll put 30 there. Finally, I have to give it a name. And I could have FileMaker Server send me an email notification every time the backup occurs. I'll leave that off for now. Verify all the information and finish. That's it. I've already set up a, a backup schedule that will run every 30 days starting, starting today at 11 p.m. and will automatically back up all of, my, all of my database files for me. I can just set it, forget about it, and I'm protecting all of my information from any disaster that might happen. It's pretty awesome when you think about it, how easy it is to set, up, set these up um, and have your information protected. So let's go back here. The other great thing about FileMaker Server is that, um, especially now in FileMaker Server 13, is that it allows us to deploy our solutions to the web. Now more and more uh, workers are working from home. We want, uh, maybe for our particular uh, business, we want um, our customers to be able to have access to their information so that they can update their information by themselves. Maybe we want vendors to be able to access a portion of our solution so they can see orders and maybe place their own orders. So it, it comes um, very often that we want to um, make available a portion of our solution to external parties or people who are going to be accessing our solution that may or may not have a copy of FileMaker Pro on their computer. So this is where FileMaker WebDirect comes in. FileMaker WebDirect allows us to deploy our solution or a portion of it um, and be able to make it accessible through the web browser. FileMaker WebDirect takes all our existing layouts and reproduces them into HTML5, which is a standard in web, um, in web technology. But the great thing about it is that it does that completely without us having to learn any web programming whatsoever. So there is no JavaScript, no CSS that I have to learn. It simply takes my existing solution and makes it available and converts it on the fly. And the great thing, the solution is, um, works pretty much the same way that we would expect FileMaker Pro to work. It's kind of this type, desktop style solution with a lot of the interactivity that we've come to, to, to learn and, and love about FileMaker. This includes live data updates and, and uh, live updates on the solutions. So, it guarantees basically that all of our solutions are, are uh, all of our users that are using our solution have the most updated version of our solution and also the data. So I don't have to worry about 
redeploying or refreshing or anything like that. So I'd like to show you this uh, uh, in a minute, but um, first let's go, let's go back here to our story. So I've come back over here and I've got my solution. I've got my solution here. Um, and we've got a sharing now with all the users here that are uh, all my employees here on my uh, in my office. But if now I've installed something like a server here somewhere in my network and I have a little server that's tucked away in a secure location in my office. So now I'm ready to move this solution that I've created onto onto the server. And it's actually very, very easy to do. If you noticed earlier when I opened up the share menu, there's actually two options here. And I chose earlier here share with FileMaker, FileMaker clients. But there's, another, there's another option over here that says upload to FileMaker server. And it does exactly what the name implies. So I can upload the file directly here from FileMaker Pro. I'll choose this here. FileMaker tells me that I need to close the file before I upload it. I'll search here for the server that's on my network. There it goes. I need to provide um, credentials that say that I have the necessary authority to uh, upload the file to the server and simply upload the file. As easy as that, this file has been already uploaded to the server. What you're seeing here now is not the local version of the file, but the hosted one on the server. And I know that because the name over here um, next, to, next to my solution file has the name of my server. And also down here, I notice that there's a little padlock, which again indicates that there's a secure connection between the server and my FileMaker Pro, uh, my FileMaker Pro client. So that means that the file that I created earlier, um, I, can actually, I can actually lose that. That file could, you know, and it might. Something might happen to it all by complete accident. And it wouldn't interrupt my work. Because all my information is now resides on the server and is being backed up daily and monthly, right? Um, and it's being protected by FileMaker server. So all of my information is there. I could, cook, I could just close my computer, uh, go off uh, early today, and uh, everybody will be able to continue working just as usual. But the great thing about it, FileMaker Server, again, is to make it available to everybody. So let's, look, let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead back here into my iPad and see how I can access this that solution file from my iPad. So back here in FileMaker Go, tap here in Host, and I see my server. Tap in there. And I can see a list of all the files that are being hosted. I can see the customer file, tap into it. And just like before, I can see, I can access that solution file from FileMaker Go. The difference here is that, as I mentioned earlier, you have this little padlock over here, which once again is indicating that it's a secure connection with the server, which is really amazing. But we were kind of talking about FileMaker WebDirect and how to access this solution from the web browser. So I still need to do one more thing before I, I enable that. So I need to turn FileMaker WebDirect on. So I'll come back here to FileMaker Pro, enable access from FileMaker WebDirect, and I'm going to go back here into web browser, open up a brand new web browser, and go to the FileMaker WebDirect page. I see the customer database, click on it, and that's it. I can access the same solution from my web browser very easily. So at this point, I can access the solution from pretty much anywhere I am, um, as many people as I basically want, all, my, all the members of my company can actually access it from really wherever they are and using whatever client they want to do. And while FileMaker Web Direct, like I said earlier, really acts very similar to FileMaker Pro is that it's completely interactive. So um, it would work kind of the same way if I went over here and did some changes. Say I changed Doris's name, last name to Doe. Click over here and notice how it automatically updated across all the other clients. And it works both ways. If I went back here, it changed her back to what it was before. On the iPad it changes and on the web browser it changes as well. So again, I'm ensuring that the data is exactly the same everywhere. So everybody's looking at the most current version of the data, no matter where they are, no matter how they're accessing the solution. You're probably asking yourself, well, how did I get the solution? Um, how do I make the solution here for FileMaker Web Direct? Like I mentioned earlier, there really is no web programming whatsoever. We're going to use the same skills that we've learned in FileMaker Pro in order to deploy this web application. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go back here to FileMaker Pro, and I'm going to go here to Edit Layout. Go to Layout uh, Editing Mode. And I'm going to make a couple of changes just so you can see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click here on this label. 
I'm going to go ahead and make some changes that are definitely visible. I'm going to change the color over here, and I'll probably just move the location just a little bit so we can see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and exit. And in case you've noticed, in case you haven't noticed, here in the web browser, it automatically updated. I didn't have to do any refreshes. I didn't have to reinstall or redeploy anything. Automatically updated, and I did on all clients. This is kind of the beauty and the power of FileMaker, FileMaker Server. Again, it is really kind of the heart and soul of the platform to make, making all these technologies possible. I really love this. <laughs> all right, so let's update our story over here. So I've included FileMaker Server into my environment, but a couple of things remain the same. I still design and build my solution using FileMaker Pro on my desktop. But now in order to deploy and manage my solution, I upload my file into FileMaker Server. FileMaker Server makes it available to run on any one of these clients. I can use it from an, I can access it from an iPhone, an iPad, iPad Touch, uh, uh, iPod Touch. I can access it from FileMaker Pro using a, either Windows or a Mac computer, or I can access it uh, from any supported web browser using FileMaker Web Direct. So with that, I've addressed several of the uh, uh, sort of the concerns I had earlier with my with my peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, configuration. Now, now my environment is very easy to manage. I can see all the solutions that I have running. I can uh, upload and, and uh, remove the files that I don't uh, remove files that I don't need. It scales with me. I'm not limited to just five users. I can go up to um, hundreds of users simultaneously. It's secured. It's added additional security measures into the environment, uh, like SSL encryption, so I can encrypt all the communication between the server and the client. It's also protecting my files using backups. It's automatically backing up all my all my information, so that if there's any disasters, I'm covered. And it also now I can access my information from uh, any web browser. So anybody even outside my network, um, as long as I uh, open it up for them, they can access the solution from a, from a web browser. So kind of quickly going through that, compare it here directly with with peer to peer. Again, see up to five users here in peer to peer, kind of unlimited with FileMaker Server. There's really no restrictions. I can see statistics and logs in FileMaker Server, secure network traffic, easy to back up, and the new FileMaker Web Direct for accessing the solution. So maybe now you're asking yourself, what, well, what do I need in order to have FileMaker Server in my environment? Well, quickly, let's talk a little bit about some of the, some of the operating system requirements. So you'll, you'll need a computer uh, where you install FileMaker Server. And um, here are the operating systems that we support, that we currently support. So again, um, you can either install it on Mac OS or on a Windows environment. Uh, either one is fine. And these are the versions of the operating system we support. I'm not going to dive too much into the details here, but I want to bring up a couple of uh, uh, important notes about this. Notice that on the Windows side, all the operating systems supported are 64-bit. That's because FileMaker Server is a 64-bit environment. It supports and, it, and takes advantage of 64-bit addressing, which is really amazing. So it takes advantage of it can use a lot of, uh, lot of RAM if, um, if that's available. Um, also notice that we do support, uh, although we do support a couple of um, workstation operating systems, we highly recommend that you install FileMaker Server on a, on a server-grade operating system. There's just a lot more robustness and a lot more reliability in a server-grade operating system. I will note that on the Mac side, you probably notice that um, OS X Mavericks 10.9 server is not included on the list. It is currently not supported. It's not an admission by, uh, on my part. On the hardware side, um, the requirements for FileMaker Server are actually quite small, if you think about it. Um, these are both uh, minimum and the recommended configurations on the hardware side. So looking at the recommended, a four-core CPU, four gigs of RAM, and 80 gig hard drive. That's almost about any computer out there will, will work. Um, we kind of do recommend that you get server-grade uh, hardware for it, but uh, as you can see here, the requirements are pretty low. It doesn't really matter also if it's a physical machine or if it's a virtual, it's a virtual server. FileMaker Server will work on either one. It makes no distinction between physical or, or virtual. Well, as we mentioned before, we are going to take, uh, we're going to try to answer as many questions as, uh, as we possibly can. So in case you haven't submitted your questions yet, um, I'll go over a couple of other pieces of information while you submit your questions. So first off, there's a lot of information out there uh, thanks to our community. The FileMaker Technical Network is a great place to gather, to get information and share 
um, and share knowledge with other people out there. You can get tips from a lot of experts that are in the community that are willing to share the, their, their knowledge with others. And you can also have access to technical briefs, how-to articles, and white papers. Uh, account to the, uh, access to the um, FileMaker Technical Network requires a free account. It's completely free to gain access to the FileMaker Technical Network. However, there is also a subscription uh, account. It's FileMaker Developer Subscription. Uh, it's a yearly subscription and um, it brings with it uh, additional um, benefits. One of those, which I think is particularly useful, um, is access to a uh, FileMaker Server Development License. You get a license at FileMaker Server, which you can download and install on a computer and use it for development uh, purposes. You'll have be able to connect three FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go, and FileMaker Web Direct um, users at any given time, and which is great and it's great and more than enough for a development uh, environment. Here are a couple of other resources that you might find helpful. Um, you can download, you can actually download a free trial version of FileMaker Server from this uh, from our website. There's also a lot of great doc documentation on our website. Um, three are really kind of special uh, regarding FileMaker Server, which is the FileMaker Server 13 Getting Started Guide, the general hardware considerations for FileMaker Server, and the FileMaker 13 Web Direct Guide. All three great resources when you're thinking about FileMaker Server and deploying it in your environment. Some additional resources. Um, on our website, you can also see uh, some uh, great customer success stories. You can see other customers that are probably that may be in the same industry that you are, and how they've used FileMaker to uh, how they've leveraged FileMaker, FileMaker um, to uh, solve their business needs. There's also other webinars, uh, just like this one, covering a lot a lot of other topics, um, things that we could not cover today, and also on the FileMaker training resources. Uh, under our support section of our website, there's a lot of training information, including information on, on um, FileMaker, the FileMaker training series, which is the official training documentation of FileMaker. And it's the roadmap in, uh, in order to get the FileMaker developer certification. So with that, we're going to open it out here for questions. I'm going to uh, answer as many questions as we possibly can. All right. Thanks, Ronnie. This is Ryan Minook again. And Thanks, Ronnie, for that fantastic webinar. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that Q&A. The first question that we have lined up, are there any limits to the number of connections to the web direct at any given time? Um, so we have, so we've tested FileMaker web direct and we currently support up to 50 concurrent connections to FileMaker web direct, using FileMaker web direct connection to FileMaker server. Uh, that being said, that there is really no hard limit in software. So that means if connection 51 were to be initiated, FileMaker Server would not uh, reject it. So it can go beyond that. It's just that's 50 is the number of connections that we currently support, and we've fairly tested in our lab. And let me also throw in that the WebDirect connections, which we call concurrent connections, you can purchase those in five packs. So if you actually purchase, um, you know, a Let's say you purchase two five packs and have ten. You wouldn't be able to go to uh, beyond those ten connections. Um, but there's a, a, a packs up to fifty, and then we have an unlimited license. All right. The next question: uh, Can FileMaker Server be running on a Windows-based server? Your demo was uh, entirely on a Mac. Um, I'll actually make a correction there. Um, so FileMaker Server can run on either Windows or Mac. Um, we kind of displayed quickly the operating system that we support. But quite honestly, in my demo, even though you didn't see it, FileMaker Server was running on Windows Server, uh, even though I was accessing it from a Mac. It kind of goes to show how um, versatile the, the, our software is. OK, um, the next question. Do I have to back up my entire database with each backup? Do you have to back up the entire database file? So it um, sounds like uh, maybe uh, do we have to do full backups, or can we do an incremental backup? So yeah, we didn't have much time to show all of the the um, the tools that are available for backing up in FileMaker Server. And there's actually two distinct um, uh, tools in FileMaker Server for for performing backups. The one that we explored today was the schedule backups. And the schedule backup does a full copy of the database. Um, the database file, as long as it has, as long as it's changed since the last backup. Now, the other tool that we have is called progressive backup, and progressive backup is more like it, it is an incremental backup. What progressive backup does is that it, it uh, when you turn it on the first time, it does a full backup, and then the second time it runs, 
It keeps track of all the, the changes that have occurred to the database file since the last backup. It applies those changes to, to, the, to the backup and updates it to the current version. The, the kind of the benefit here is that we can uh, create backups that are a lot more frequent than we could with scheduled backups. So we can do this instead of uh, uh, hours or days that we could with, uh, uh, with scheduled backups. With progressive backup, we can actually make updates kind of on the minutes. So we could have potentially a backup that runs every 10 minutes with very little uh, performance decrease on the server. Um, we didn't have time to cover that today, but that is another uh, tool in the Arsenal and FileMaker server. Perfect. Okay, the next question is about hardware. Can we install FileMaker Server 13 on a Mac Mini? Um, absolutely. As long as the system requirements are met, the ones that we mentioned earlier, so uh, uh, Mac OS 10.8 or 10.9, um, and the hardware requirements are correct, yes, absolutely. Okay, so the next question. How does FileMaker Server 13 handle intermittent Wi-Fi connections? Could my company use, uh, use it in some locations, have Wi-Fi access while others do not? So we're talking a little bit more here about um, um, like that could apply to both laptops and, and, uh, and iOS devices. But let's concentrate really on the, on the iOS. On iOS, for the FileMaker Go client that we were showing earlier, we do have an option so that um, when you're on the network, you have an option that will allow FileMaker, uh, FileMaker Go to reconnect automatically if it loses connection and you go back into FileMaker Go. So there is some resilience built into the platform that allows to uh, kind of not lose the, um, uh, the workflow that you've done so far. Um, however, a prolonged disconnect from, from the network will absolutely uh, stop your uh, stop stop the progress. Uh, but there is res some resilience built into the platform that will that, that can accommodate for losses in the network. Okay. Next question is about WebDirect. Can scripts be run from WebDirect? Absolutely. And that's one of the great things about FileMaker WebDirect. It's so similar to FileMaker Pro and its uh, capabilities. There's a lot of things that we can do in FileMaker WebDirect um, that were kind of impossible a few years ago. So one of the things that is running scripts. Uh, FileMaker WebDirect can also um, run scripts triggered by, uh, by script triggers, so events that happen on, on a layout. FileMaker WebDirect can even import and export records. So a lot of really cool things. Uh, yeah, even drag and drop is supported into container fields. I can take a file and drag it on top of my web browser into a container field, and that will be stored directly into my server. So yes. OK, the next question. Can you tell me the differences between FileMaker Server 13 and the previous FileMaker Server 12 or 11? That can take an entire webinar all by itself. Uh, but, I'll, but I'd like to address a couple of things that, I, that are top of my list. Um, the first thing is, and we kind of mentioned it really briefly here today, was that FileMaker Server, is a, FileMaker Server 13 is a 64-bit architecture. It's built on a 64-bit architecture, uh, which is a complete departure from, uh, from uh, FileMaker 12 and 11. Um, we do not support 32-bit uh, um, operating systems uh, anymore. What 64-bit addressing allows us to do is to be able to address a lot more RAM, a lot more memory uh, uh, that's available on the computer. This also means that, that we have more access here uh, when it comes to caching, so the performance uh, usually is a lot better. So all the components internally in FileMaker Server uh, 13 are 64-bit, so they work a lot, they work much better and much more reliable. The other great thing for me in, uh, in FileMaker Server 13, and we've talked about it quite a bit today, is obviously uh, FileMaker WebDirect. It's a completely uh, brand new, really breakthrough web technology uh, that allows it to access those uh, solutions from, uh, from a web browser. So that's, that's one of the other things. And uh, there's a third option for me that I really kind of kind of hits home with me, and it's security. Um, FileMaker Server 13 has enhanced the security, um, not just with the SSL encryption, but also when it comes to um, encrypting uh, database files. FileMaker 13 now allows you to uh, do what we call encryption at rest. Your entire database can be completely encrypted using very strong industry standard encryption methodologies. And um, FileMaker Server is able to handle that and, and support it on, um, sub on uh, hosted database files. So those three are kind of the, the, the three things that hit really home for me in, in uh, this version of FileMaker Server. But uh, again, we can go an entire hour talking about the differences. All right, the next question. 
Is a static IP required for FileMaker Server? A static IP uh, is not required, but it is highly recommended. And I will say that again, it is highly recommended to have a static IP for FileMaker Server. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind it, but one of them is just going to make your uh, your users a lot uh, easier to find and look to locate your server um, on a daily basis. So although it is not required, it is very highly recommended. Okay. And do you have any advice or can you give me some advice about migrating databases hosted on FileMaker Server 12 to FileMaker Server 13? Sure. Um, so in FileMaker, uh, FileMaker 12, when we uh, moved from 11 to 12, we actually changed uh, the underlying format of our files or the structure of the files. Um, in, FileMaker Server, in FileMaker 13, we're continuing to use that same for format that we introduced in FileMaker 12. So taking a file from FileMaker Server 12 to FileMaker Server 13 requires no changes in the file itself. Um, it really is all going to be a matter of uninstalling FileMaker Server 12, installing FileMaker Server 13, and uploading the file. So as far as the file goes, your database files, there's really no change necessary um, uh, in, the, in your solution itself. Perfect. All right, that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Ronnie Rios and FileMaker, it's been our absolute pleasure chatting with you, and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thanks.